Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to the first episode of This Week in Gaming in the New Year. 2019 was full of huge gaming moments, and 2020 is kicking off with a bang. We create this show every Saturday, so be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. Our top story this week is something of a bombshell. Vince Zampella, the co-founder of Respawn Studios, is taking over DICE LA. He and Jason West were the original founders of Infinity War. They oversaw the development of Call of Duty and launched the franchise's insane success with the original Modern Warfare and its sequel. While West left Respawn shortly before Titanfall's launch, Zampella has remained as head of the studio overseeing development of both Titanfall games, Apex Legends, and Jedi Fallen Order. While Titanfall might have failed to gain the critical and commercial success Call of Duty has enjoyed, Apex Legends was an overnight success, pulling in well over 50 million players in just a month. Jedi Fallen Order has also proven to be a widely popular Star Wars game with both critics and players. It's safe to say that where Zampella goes, success follows. DICE LA are most well known for supporting DICE Stockholm's development of the Battlefield franchise. Fans regard LA developers highly, often claiming they saved Battlefield 4 by continuing its post-launch support with the CTE program and DLC. And while the truth of the situation may be a bit more complicated than that, it's clear DICE LA have played a big role in Battlefield success. Most recently, they developed the ill-fated competitive mode for Battlefield 5 that was ultimately cancelled. The maps they built for the mode, Provence and Lafayette Islands, were released as small-scale maps, which upset players who were expecting a more traditional experience. Zampella's takeover will essentially transform DICE LA into a new studio, independent of DICE. EA will still own it, of course, and Zampella will continue to oversee Respawn as well. Respawn are currently working on a new Titanfall game, a mobile version of Apex Legends, and are releasing a Medal of Honor VR title later this year. As for the future of DICE LA, it's unlikely they'll be working on Battlefield, Battlefront, or Mirror's Edge in the future. EA's chief studios officer has confirmed the studio will be making a new game on their own. Beyond that, everything is just speculation at this point. Hardcore Milsim Escape from Tarkov is having a cheeky beaky time on Twitch right now. It's claimed the live streaming site's top spot is the most watched game this week, taking over Fortnite, League of Legends, and the oddly popular Just Chatting category. The surge in popularity is due in large part to an ongoing promotion for the game on Twitch in which viewers watching Tarkov streams can earn in-game drops just by watching. Tarkov got a series of updates toward the end of 2019 that added a ton of new content and further refined the core gameplay and progression. The drop promotion has come at a great time as the game is just getting to the point where it's approachable for new players. It's basically a perfect storm of an addicting game with tons of content and interest from content creators that are new to it. Some individual channels are pulling in over 80,000 concurrent viewers right now. Across all of Twitch, Tarkov is averaging well over 150,000 concurrent viewers. Battlefield 5's upcoming fourth Pacific map, likely set on the Solomon Islands, might just be around the corner. Promotional material for new cosmetic items seems to feature a jungle-themed map in the background. DICE will be getting back from vacation next week, so it's likely an announcement is coming soon. Since the 5.2 update, Battlefield 5 has been mired in controversy and outrage. Players are upset that DICE has changed the game for the worst after a year of slow improvements. The Pacific content was a massive uplift to player morale and generated so much positive buzz about the game. Then 5.2 launched and all that goodwill the Pacific had inspired vanished. Since then, DICE have selectively scaled back on some of the more dramatic changes 5.2 made to the game's TTK, but players are still unsatisfied. It's likely another major tweak to the 5.2 changes is in the works, but we won't know anything until DICE announces it. This week's Tides of War Unlock, the Type 2A SMG made Battlefield 5 fun to play again for many, as it doesn't seem to suffer as much as most weapons did because of the 5.2 changes. Hopefully DICE aren't planning to weaken it in the near future. All things considered, we can probably expect a welcome back recap from DICE next week or the next with an update regarding the Pacific content and further TTK changes. The biggest question mark for Battlefield 5 right now is content in 2020. The past year was a slow trickle of content that didn't do much to satisfy players until well after summer. 
If one thing is clear, it's that DICE needs to deliver more content in 2020 and finally get around to fixing Battlefield 5's core problems. It might already be too late to save the game's reputation, but with new consoles on the horizon, it's never been a more critical time to restore faith in the franchise. Call of Duty Modern Warfare might be getting more custom class slots in the near future. Developers have announced testing of additional slots is underway, but the major bugs need to be ironed out before it goes live, if it even does. Players are currently limited to five custom class slots in Modern Warfare. Given the game's massive push for weapon customization, it seems like a pretty counterintuitive choice to launch with only five class slots. Then again, the insane grind to unlock attachments when weapon customization is so central to the game's DNA is even less intuitive. Regardless, it's good news to kick off Modern Warfare's post-launch support in the new year. The good news doesn't come with some dark clouds, however. Activision are scaling back esports events for Call of Duty League, citing teams were at risk of being overwhelmed by the event schedule. Basically, they cut one-third of the events to ease pressure on organizations that have multiple teams competing in different games like Overwatch and CSGO. The Witcher 3 broke 100,000 concurrent players on Steam this week following the Netflix Witcher show's explosive popularity. Both the game and the show are based on the same novels, and the show borrows heavily from the look and music of the third game. They're also both fairly faithful adaptations. So when you throw in Henry Cavill looking and sounding just like Geralt from the games and the show's liberal use of bath scenes, it's a no-brainer that The Witcher 3 would pick up some fresh players. Results for 2019's Steam Awards have been announced. Sekiro took Game of the Year with Beat Saber GTA V DayZ also winning notable awards. The games were chosen by Steam users who nominated and voted for them throughout the past few months. The awards are more of a popularity contest than a critical appraisal, so the awards don't carry all that much weight, but it's still nice to see some worthy titles being nominated. Speaking of GTA V, Rockstar's Darling Child is turning 7 this year and shows no signs of slowing down. It's been one of the top 10 selling games every month for the past 6 years and is the third best selling game of all time behind Minecraft and Tetris. So it might come as a surprise that it's been added to the Xbox Game Pass. Subscribers can now download and play the game in full. Recently, Xbox head Phil Spencer suggested Control would be added to the Game Pass to boost the game's audience. These subscription services are often viewed as a quick way of getting more eyeballs on a game, often with the hope that people will play them and perhaps take part in the microtransactions when they otherwise wouldn't have played the game at all. GTA V has made over $6 billion in sales and microtransactions revenue. With Game Pass, that number will likely keep getting bigger just a little bit faster than before. And despite GTA's huge success when it comes to top earners of 2019, it should come as no surprise that Fortnite took the top spot. It earned $1.8 billion in 2019. While that's an intense number, it's still down 25% from the last year's $2.4 billion. The drop is somewhat expected given that the game's success peaked well beyond a sustainable level and was expected to plateau much lower. In second place was Pokemon Go, which earned $1.4 billion. Overall, the free-to-play games accounted for 80% of all digital games revenue in 2019. Spending on full-paid retail games actually shrunk by about 5% despite monster hits like Modern Warfare, Red Dead Redemption 2, and other high-profile launches. The Metro franchise might be making its way to the Nintendo Switch. The European Games Rating Board have officially rated its Switch version despite there being no announcement from either the game's developers or Nintendo. The Switch has gotten a number of high-profile AAA game ports since launch. Games like 2016's Doom, Wolfenstein, L.A. Noir have all made their way to the Nintendo's low-power console. So while it's a surprise to see such mature and graphically demanding titles on the Switch, it's clearly working out for users. In our final story this week, Microsoft released a new trailer for their upcoming flight simulator game. It showcases winter weather, and as you'd expect, it's stunning. 
Microsoft are using tons of resources to build their next-gen flight sim, including real-time weather data and actual satellite images of Earth. And that wraps it up for today's episode of This Week in Gaming. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave us a like. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.